Hi everyone, I'm Hazel West, the author of the Modern Tales of the Fina series, and this is the Scars of War blog tour. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. So today I'm here with you for another interview that I'm doing um, in this video format, which I hope everyone likes. Uh, this one is conducted by my good friend Mara, and we will just jump into the questions that she has sent me today. So the first one is, what was some of the inspiration for Scars of War, the third book in the Modern Tales of Nafina series? Um, so this one actually, I'm not really sure if I can pinpoint any real um, inspirations. I mean, obviously the folklore, um, I used a lot of changeling lore, and I had been wanting to write a book uh, dealing with changelings for a while, so that was kind of, um, you know, that was kind of part of it. I think this one was really fun because I kind of got to do a sort of um, more procedural uh, kind of feel to it, it's sort of like, um, because the the BPAF, the Bureau of Protection Against Fair Folk, are really like an FBI sort of uh, organization. It's just they deal with um, fairies and disturbances of the fey nature, um, as opposed to like normal serial killers, things like that. So it was kind of fun, um, and I got to do a road trip story, which I've always wanted to do, and so that was also really fun. Um, as far as like specific inspirations, probably not that much, um, but yeah. Um, the next question is, how did the writing experience differ from writing the first two books in the series? Um, then this one, um, I think the thing I like, one of the things I like writing the Nafina series is that each book is in itself its own story, um, whether it's like more adventure more kind of character driven, and um, this one, like I said earlier, it is kind of almost a mystery procedural, it kind of has that feel. Um, but it's also um, about the characters, like, and it, at their heart, all the stories are really the character's journey as opposed to uh, more focused on plot, which a lot of books can be, because I don't like to write like that, I like to write about the characters because I'm writing about them, so they should be the central for, uh, focus in the story. Um, and so that is kind of um, what more of what Scars of War even had than some of the than the other two books is because I think it was mainly focusing on the characters' journeys and where that kind of leads up to book four. That's really where the writing style differs. Plus, um, books two and three have multiple uh, points of view as opposed to just a single one, like in Blood Ties. So the next question is, what were some of the challenges you faced writing a third book in a series? I think anyone who writes series books can will tell you that it's really, really hard to keep writing series. Um, <laughs> depending on, like, I mean, you kind of know that not every book is going to be as good. Um, third books especially, like a lot of times a sequel may be, like a second book may be even better than the first one. And I kind of felt, like I personally loved An Earthly King. I think that was probably one of my favorite book in the series. Um, but Scars of War took me a long time to write. Um, like actually genuinely over a year to write. Um, because I just got stuck, I got hung up on plot lines, and I still personally don't feel it's my best book plot-wise, but as I said before, I usually write for the characters, so, um, but I think also is like, kind of, you have to, with a series like this, you have to kind of balance out, like, characters you know already, and then, because I add characters, like in this one, um, I introduced Cass in book two, but you don't really get to see a lot of her until this one because she has a point of view um, in this one, because this is really like her story, it's really Aiden's story, 
and it's um, still kind of on Eamon's storyline as well, kind of finishing up where um, an earthly king left off. So, um, as opposed to, again, like, what's different about this book is that it is quite a bit different from book one, which was mainly Kieran's focus, but like I said, this, this series kind of follows a different character and a different story in each one. So it is a series, but each book is really its own story as well. Um, but yeah, challenges, it, it's definitely hard to write like multiple books, like especially middle books, because this really is a middle book in the series, a kind of bridger between uh, books two and four. Um, so it's not quite as big, it's not quite as epic, but it's still an important story that you need to tell, and kind of juggling that as a writer it can sometimes be really hard. So the next question is, who is your favorite character in Scars of War and why? Um, I'm definitely gonna have to say Oberon. I, I just love writing him so much. Um, I really enjoyed him in An Earthly King, and I'm gonna talk a little bit about Oberon and his character development here, because um, this, it's, it goes into why I really like him so much. So when I first conceived him in An Earthly King, he was actually supposed to be like a secondary villain, but when I started writing him, he kind of turned into something else, sort of this almost anti-hero. and. Um, I had no intentions really of bringing him back, but when I started um, thinking of ideas for the book, uh, for Scars of War, I was like, you know, it would be really interesting if Oberon actually came into this. And that was actually one of the plot points that kind of helped me form the story better, um, because it gave kind of a subplot that made more sense than what I had originally. Um, so. Oberon was never supposed to come back. You were only supposed to see him briefly in, like, An Earthly King. And he was kind of supposed to help, but then not really. Um, and then, but he came back, and he's actually become one of my favorite characters. Um, I really just love him because he has so many layers. He's one of those characters that genuinely surprises me all the time. Like, I'm still not really sure where his character is going, and I'm really interested to see, like, where he does end up at the end. Because... I genuinely don't know. Like, there's an entire scene at the end of Scars of War that totally surprised me. I didn't even, I didn't even know where it was going, to be honest. Um, but I really liked it, and that's why I love Oberon, because he surprises me. And he's one of those characters who's very much his own self, and authors can do nothing about characters like that. Okay, so, assuming you can talk about the villain in Scars of War, how did working with this villain live up to the villains in past installments? I will say a little bit about it. Um, it's not like a huge secret. Um, I was not as fond of the villains in this one. They really only make an appearance at the end of the story because due to the the way this story is created, um, it's more kind of a mystery. You don't really see the villains um, early on in the story. Um, and I was not overly fond of them. I didn't get a lot of time to know them, but they're not like... Even though the plot line is an important and integral part of the story, the villains really were not, and I don't know if that makes sense to anyone, but <laughs> if, um, um, it, when you read it, you'll probably kind of get what I'm talking about. Because really it was, this is, the plot line and the villains in this were sort of a carryover from an earthly king, really at its core, so um, it was kind of uh, more of a continuation of uh, what happened in An Earthly King and the repercussions of that. So it was really more of a clean-up job, I guess, if you want to call it that, than an actual new villain. Um, however, I will tease that I am really excited to write the villain for book four, because he's a real villain. like. Lorcan was in book one, and even more frightening than he was, so, um, I'm definitely excited to see where that goes. Okay, the next, uh, question is, throughout the writing process, which character did you get along with the best, and who gave you the most trouble? Um, I think at this point, um, none of the characters have really given me trouble in this one. Bree was the one who gave me trouble in book two. 
um, because I was, I think I had a different idea of her and who she was than who she actually was as a character, so, but once I figured that out, I was able to write her a little better. Um, I had, at points, trouble with Cass because her character is very similar to mine and therefore that makes her hard to write at times. Um, just because you kind of have to have a sort of a distance from characters to be able to write them a lot of times. But apart from that, I think um, I didn't really have any trouble with the characters in this one. It was more the plot line. Um, but my favorite character to write still is probably Eamon. I, I always like writing from his point of view because he's, he's a very easy point of view to write. Um, I enjoy his kind of like subtle humor, sarcasm, that I didn't really realize he had until I was writing from his point of view um, in book two, so that was kind of fun. Um, I also really enjoyed writing or having Aiden in the story more and kind of getting to see a different side of him that wasn't told from uh, Kieran's point of view um, because I think th this showed more of Aiden as himself as opposed to Aiden as Kieran's older brother and uh, or even as um, a friend of Aemon so that I think that was an interesting and it showed a different side of Aiden that you probably even as a reader didn't get to see in the previous books so that was really interesting um, but Oberon is obviously still really fun character to write I would love to give him his own point of view, but I think that would be disastrous to any story, so um, <laughs> probably not gonna happen. And the final question is, how many more installments can we expect in Modern Tales of Athena, and what are your future writing plans once you're done with it? So the actual Modern Tales of Athena um, is going to end in book four. Um, that's the next book. Um, it's gonna be a super epic conclusion. I'm working on kind of figuring out all the, um, everything for it right now. Trying to get a long synopsis done and an outline, um, so I'm really working very hard to make it a hopefully uh, satisfying epic conclusion to the series. Um, but I would like to also extend the world a little bit, so even though, um, this is, that book four will be the end of the Modern Tales in the Fina series, you may see more books um, in the same world, like maybe one set in England or Scotland, um, and kind of get to see other parts of the world. You may even get to see characters you know from the Modern Tales of Nafina. At this point, it's kind of um, just in the very early stages of uh, plotting, so um, I can't say when any of that will be out. As far as future writing projects, um, aside from the Nafina series, um, I have a couple serial stories that I'm working on. Um, I'm going to be sharing the one I'm going to be working on with uh, for Nano this year later. Um, you'll get to see an announcement on that and maybe some sneak peeks um, in November, um, but I'm not going to spoil it quite yet. Um, but the other story that I'm working on right now is um, probably a novella. Of, it's a retelling of the Hades and Persephone story kind of said in modern day and I'm really excited to really get into working on that one so that's actually going to be one of my winter writing projects and that one will be posted as a serial online story so um, you'll all get a chance to read that if you wish so that was the author interview with Mara and I'd like to thank her and everyone else who has followed this tour um, because this is the final day of the tour and um, I'd just like to thank you all for um, your comments and your interest. And once again, I need to remind you to um, join, uh, enter the giveaway for the signed copy of Scars of War and the Glamour Dispersing B-Path necklace. And also, if you do not yet, or if you do not um, win the giveaway, obviously you can get copies of the book anywhere. Um, on Amazon or CreateSpace, um, and this also, I have put these in my Etsy shop, which I will link to this video, so if you really want one, you can buy one for yourself. So thanks again to everyone for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the vlog tour. Bye.